Our next speaker is Ms. Uh, Laura Bernice uh, Peralta. She works for the Technological de Costa Rica, and um, she is by training agriculture, agribusiness engineer, and then followed by master's degree in environmental management. Uh, she works on supply chains like tomato, pork, dairy, horticultural crops, and more recently with food loss and waste assessment and reduction strategies. She is also coordinator for the Costa Rican Food and Food Loss and Waste Management uh, Network. Uh, so I invite uh, Ms. Peralta to present his talk on development of tomato value added products uh, as an alternative use for oversupply in Costa Rica. Mr. Peralta, please. Well, uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, I thank you in advance for the attention I'm going to get from you for the next uh, minutes. Um, I would also like to acknowledge the other co-authors of our study, uh, one of them, Marianela Gamboa, who could not join us today, and Maria Fernanda Jimenez, who is sitting here in the first row. Um, as said, my, uh, the presentation is the development of value-added products as an alternative use for the oversupply that we are seeing in Costa Rica for tomato. Uh, probably I'm going to go on a different topic from what we have been talking uh, in the prior presentations. However, the idea is to see how different types of interventions can be brought into the food and loss uh, situation in our developing countries. Um, well, just as a general information, in case you were not very familiar with Costa Rica, we are that small spot in the middle between North and South America. We are a 51 kilometer square kilometers country with a 60 billion GDP, mostly uh, which comes in a 6.2% from agriculture. Uh, we are very known for our pineapples and our bananas, but we also produce a lot of other uh, products, fresh products, some for exportation and of course for local uh, grown and consumption. <coughs> In terms of my department, just for you to know, uh, our agribusiness school at Tecnológico de Costa Rica uh, becomes as part of the academic offer we have in one of the five um, public institutions, university institutions in the country, and we develop different areas of um, study, whether it comes from the academic point of view or either research or extension. And we try to also always bring a scope to our students and our research uh, from the point of view of agribusiness. So we try to integrate all the different phases that comes from the farm to the table so that part of the solutions that we propose can be really uh, feasible for the producers, the farmers, or the processors. Therefore, we try to integrate production aspects, agro-industry marketing, finances, and so on. Specifically talking about the study, as a general background, we decided that we would work on tomato because of different reasons, not just because we decided that tomato was a nice produce. The thing is that we approach the National Tomato Program, <coughs> sorry, from the Ministry of Agriculture, and they came to determine that first of all, tomato is the most consumed vegetable in the country. Second of all, um, there were peaks in the production which led into the food and loss waste issue. Um, since it is very hard to tell the producers when to produce, when to uh, have their crops done, we uh, decided that it was better from our point of view to intervene when the oversupply was coming around. This oversupply definitely led into mass market and uh, competitiveness losses for the farmers. And third, there are challenges in value adding capabilities in the subsector. This means that even when we know agro-industry is a, a better opportunity in some cases, of course, than just losing the products or becoming it into composting solutions. Uh, not all of the farmers have the capability to go into these sort of processes. Uh, also, um, thinking about these possible uh, problems that we saw from the national program, our institute priorly developed four basic formulations for finished products uh, based on tomato. And we also try to pay attention on the fact that we have to do it with table tomato, the big rounded one and not the industrial type, because that is what we grow in Costa Rica. It's not, it was not a matter of trying to change the genetics or the seeds that they were using, but using the oversupply in something much more useful than composting. 
Therefore, the objective was to evaluate the mentioned formulations, uh, which were a jam, a pineapple sauce, a paste, and dehydrated tomato, and determine processing yield, cost, market acceptance as an opportunity for farmers and small producers, as well as uh, making this an aid in the use of the oversupply tomato to avoid the losses. Um, these formulations were based on a prior market study so that we would determine that these would be differentiated products in our market. And of course, we thought of a combination of fruits with the pineapple since we have a lot of uh, rejected pineapples in the country, so we could use them at a very good price as well. We developed our methodology in three different stages. First of all, here. We came into pilot processing trials. We have a small <coughs> processing plant in our institution. So we carried out several replications to establish technical characteristics of the projects that we were developing in terms of cost, yield, and uh, technical characteristics. Then we took these products and we carried out a market study because we did know that maybe we would meet the technical standards, but the market must have to be willing to acquire the product, therefore it wouldn't be a solution. Um, in this case, we tried to manage this into local places, where, in communities, where we know that tomato is also being grown, so that we can start to consider local <coughs> markets development as well. Um, we determined price, amount, presentation that consumers would be able to acquire. And as a third phase, we came to do some technology transference close to the production areas as well, uh, and we were using basic technology that was um, that farmers would be able to acquire in a close future. As a result, uh, I would like to present these tables. I'm not going to go through all of them, but just uh, to call your attention, for example, in between the pineapple, tomato sauce, and the jam, we came to find out that one product was better accepted from than the other, for example, 60, oops, I'm sorry. 67 percent of the intermediate consumers determined they would buy the jam. We Costa Ricans love a lot of sweet stuff, so we decided that that would be a good option. And actually, it is consistent because 66 of them were mini markets, and then the final consumers would also say they would buy it. So this would be probably a food supply change that would be feasible in the sort in the in this kind of product. Uh, in the case of the other two products, we did also find acceptance from the market, but there was something interesting, for example, in the case of the dehydrated tomato. We managed to do this in a very small scale since we were doing trials. Therefore, the cost of production was extremely high for us. We compare it to the price that the consumer said they would be willing to pay. Again, uh, what we try to see here is that even though it's a technical, uh, feasible, proposition, definitely it would not be in terms of price. So we are not recommending, for example, a dehydrated tomato at this point for some of the producers, unless we explore other kinds of techniques in order to get this dehydrated tomato, for example, sun, uh, solar energy, since we are a tropical country, probably that's going to be a, a nice solution. Um, some of the characteristics we came across with the produced uh, goods was that, well, acidity and soluble solids content were as expected for this product, so we are technically okay. Um, we like to explore a little bit in our lycopene contents because we thought this would be a nice marketing tool in the future. Lycopene is a very powerful antioxidant, therefore uh, we wanted to see what happened once we processed the tomato because not all the lycopene stays in the process after we apply thermal um, processes. Therefore, we found out that, for example, tomato and paste had very high concentrations of lycopene. However, the jam and the pineapple sauce didn't. So we have to be careful. and We cannot merchandise the jam, for example, as a high lycopene content product. Um, the yield was definitely related to the influence that it had on the cost of production. Um, <clears throat> as general comments, for example, price competitiveness challenges are still faced. We have some products that in small scale production are very expensive, so uh, we propose that in association with other crops and other produce, maybe we can have processing plants that would be much more efficient and profitable. Um, the jam and the paste are the ones to present the best acceptance and commercial opportunity, and the dehydrated tomato, while it was widely accepted, uh, we have to see that it is not cost competitive at this point. 
what it has to do with the loss reduction intervention, and that's why we're here this whole week, is the fact that we try to take some of our data and transform it into the kind and amount of tomato that we'll be retrieving from the oversupply in the country. For example, according to the demand that the market study showed us, we would be needing these, sorry, we would be needing these amounts of final product in order to satisfy the demand. If we would sum all that and multiply it by the yield that we know from our processing trials, then we would be able to calculate the amount of fresh tomato that would be possibly rescued from our country. In this case, for example, we would be retrieving almost 226 tons per year of fresh tomato. Um, we would say that it is only 5% of the national yield. Maybe that doesn't mean much, but when we try to look into some of the data we are also retrieving from the food loss in the tomato food supply chain, we come to find out that we can rescue almost 10% of the yield. If we bring this into nutritional, into these lycopene contents, into food security because of the importance of eating fruits and vegetables like tomato, then we are probably into a, a, a nice opportunity of uh, growing into food loss reduction and food nutrition, food, um, food security and nutrition. Um, as final suggestions, we believe that low cost incremental innovation is a nice opportunity in our developing countries, but we do not have to leave this just as uh, the option. We would also have to sum some other uh, disciplines such as organizational skills, marketing and supply mechanisms in order to support food, food, and loss, uh, food loss and waste reduction processes. Also, the value-added alternatives should not be considered just as uh, technology or technical capabilities. They should also be accompanied by, dif by different uh, processing scopes. For example, differentiating your products, um, determining uh, some sort of seal on the origin or the good practices that you are producing your final goods from. And for example, in our country, we are coming to find that there is a new, um, people are, are taking very much into consideration, for example, artisan products. We have seen that in the dairy experience and maybe we can reply some of that in some other crops as well. Finally, a food supply chain and agribusiness scopes, we believe that let us have more integrated visions, therefore multidisciplinary actions and interactions are needed to address this issue. We do believe that even when we have a, an excellent technical idea sometimes, we need to accompany it with the possibility that farmers are going to become better in their income or otherwise they probably won't be adopting the solutions that we try to present as an academic. Um, currently, we are working in assessment according to the food loss and waste protocol since we didn't have an official methodology in Costa Rica. Uh, we are also trying to reply this experience in various food supply chains, not only in tomato. We are going to do this into artisan dairy products, leafy vegetables, and we are already developing some other value-added products such as guava, plum, avocados, just to mention some. Um, the other thing that I would like to tell you is uh, finally that Costa Rica has become uh, very active in the food and loss reduction strategies. We have recently established a network, which is an alliance among public, uh, academics, and private institutions. And we are working towards research and innovation, awareness, policies, and alliances, and we are starting to share the experiences that either producers, farmers, or uh, academy are building on at the moment. That would be all from my side. Thank you very much. <laughs>